Okay, so uh, we have a lot of infrastructure set up uh, to support all of this. Uh, and we need to be a little bit on the same page on how to uh, contribute and kind of to realize what's there. Um, so in the smart project GitHub, you have uh, a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, and yeah, now we'll, we'll talk about how you can contribute to these repos over here. And um, also we'll, we'll talk about how to uh, use these when you develop, how to release them, how to, uh, you know, uh, test your packages on continuous integration. Um, all very important things. So let's get started. Uh, this is basically what Ivan was asking about previously. Uh, the idea when you're developing is to, to install the packages as we just did. Uh, but what you want to do if you want to hack on some specific package is that you clone it to its own workspace and build that workspace and source it. Uh, so that will then you know, contain the changes that you made. Uh, and if you source a workspace in a terminal, you'll use that package rather than the installed version. So don't go, you know, changing stuff in the optros folder. Uh, that's not where you're supposed to, to do your development. Uh, you, you should check out one of the packages with Git, uh, you know, do a fork into your own uh, Git uh, hub account, uh, do your changes there and submit the pull request. Um, Right, and the other thing uh, is that the way it's supposed to work now is that you can use ROSTEP to install all of the dependencies of a package. So if you just want to try out one specific package or you want to work on one package, you can clone it to a workspace. And then if you go to that workspace, uh, like we see below here, and in this root, work, root workspace folder, you execute this command. That will install all dependencies specified by the packages in that workspace. Uh, so you, you shouldn't have to, you know, apt install different things to get stuff running. You should just be able to do this command. And for our packages, that's tested on CI. Uh, that also uses this same command to install all dependencies. So this should generally work, at least for the packages that are on continuous integration, which is uh, most stuff in the public repository. Um, right, so continuous integration, what is that? Um, we use something called GitHub Actions, which is just built into GitHub. Uh, and then we use this industrial CI, uh, which is the best way of doing continuous integration in ROS. Uh, basically what you do is you, for every time something is committed on the branch where you open a pull request, it checks out the clean, a Docker image and tries to build your package within that Docker image uh, with using the dependency specified in your package XML. Um, so it's it kind of it makes sure that your package can always build on a clean uh, on a clean computer with nothing else installed. Um, right, we use, it uses ROSTEP also, and this means it's very important that you correctly specify all your dependencies in your package XML. And as we'll see, this is also important for 
releasing the packages because the dependencies between these binary packages also depend on uh, the, how you specify them in the package XML files. Uh, we have, we can look at this. This is pretty nice. Uh, you've probably seen it already, but uh, install. you can kind of see the build status of all of the packages uh, that are on CI and released in the, the kind of the entry ROS install page here. So you see that almost everything passes uh, all the releases pass, and if something is red, it means that's bad. In this case, it's actually not that bad, but uh, I'm going to try to get this one green as well. But in general, all of these should be green, and if they are red, it usually means someone has done something naughty. Um, but here you can also see which packages are released. Uh, so all of these ones here with the green symbols are released. And for repos that contain multiple packages, you can click, for example, on smart navigation here. Uh, and that shows the released packages within that repo. So here it's just the TF lat long package, for example. Uh, if we go to smart missions, it's these three packages. Uh, so it's not necessarily that the whole uh, repo has been released, but uh, you can specify which packages within each repo. Uh, but then for these ones, which only contain one package like smart messages, then it's the whole package is released. Uh, right, and this is gonna be kind of a continuous uh, work uh, from now on to make sure that all of our packages is released and I'm going to talk about that later, but that's uh, something that I'm going to need your help with. If you're the maintainer of some package, then it might be that you need to do some changes to uh, in order so that we can release it. Um, okay, yeah, maybe we should talk a little bit about this. Um, so continuous integration is very good because it allows us to kind of see that everything builds as it should. Uh, a problem is that this only applies to C++ nodes. Uh, for Python nodes, we don't even know if it will, you know, start up if the imports are correctly specified and if the, all the dependencies have been specified because it's, it's not compiled. So uh, then I would say in the general case, we want testing for the Python nodes and it doesn't need to be advanced testing. It can just be running the node, you know, like just importing all the dependencies can be a test uh, to make sure that at least it runs, uh, you know, the first thing on startup and fortunately, ROS makes this very easy. So I'll show you just an example of how this can be done in a very easy way. Um, and I mean, very applicable. It's also relatively easy to use uh, testing for C++ uh, if you want to test some actual behavior of the nodes. Um, so we use something called ROS test for this. Uh, we can check out the documentation here, but it's mostly what I'm going to talk about now. Uh, so as an example, I've added a, a test for the behavior tree in, uh, in the smart missions package. And basically, I've added a very, very simple simulator uh, implementing the, the smart interface that the behavior can, the, the behavior tree can communicate with and try to run a mission in this very simple simulator. And that can run every time 
there is a change to the behavior tree. So it's, every time the behavior tree has a push, it checks that a mission can run correctly um, in this very simple simulator. Uh, but it's actually using a uh, kind of faked IMC messages to uh, to send the plan to the behavior tree. So it's it's quite an extensive, you know, testing of a larger part of the system. But uh, I think most of all, it just makes sure that the overall logic, uh, you know, that everything on, on the large level works as it should. Uh, and yeah, I'll show you how this is set up here, but generally if, if you have something that you think also can be tested in such a very simple simulator, I would encourage you to, to contact me and we can try to make that work. So what you need to do is you need to add a test in your package CMake list. And what you do is basically these three lines here. Um, if testing, then you need to add a ROS test. Uh, so it's a file like this. And a ROS test file is basically a launch file. So you launch all of the things that you need as you would otherwise. And then you also add a test like this with a test bracket. And you, um, it's the same as you would launch a node. Uh, it's just that you write test um, and you have a time limit here in this case. Uh, and then you see that it launches a test of type monitor plan test in this case. So we'll look a little bit uh, on how that looks. So. In this case, what you do, it looks kind of similar to, to a, a regular ROS node. Uh, so you need to import unit tests, ROS pi, ROS tests. Um, and then you need to make a class like this that inherits this test case. Uh, in this case, it will subscribe to something. Uh, I think it, it subscribes to the to the behavior tree uh, kind of status message to see if it succeeds or fails the mission. Uh, so it kind of continuously subscribes to that. Um, and then it just checks if there was a failure or if it was success. And it, the only thing really it does is it asserts not self.failure here in this case. The real test is a little bit more complicated, but this is the essence of it. It's the test is just asserting that this does not happen. And in that case, it will report that there was a test failure on the CI. Um, but I think basically uh, a very useful thing would be if this test would just import all of the modules that the package depends on. Uh, and asserts that it doesn't crash before that happens. Uh, that would already, I think, uh, catch a lot of potential bugs that could happen with Python nodes. Um, so that's it on uh, unit testing, basically. Um, we have this in a couple of places already where I've added them. Um, and I think this uh, mission uh, simulator could be a very useful resource because, because it allows us to test larger parts of our system at the same time. Uh, any questions before we move on? Are you going to show how to run this locally? Uh, yeah, I can. Because I have a feeling it might be more convenient for many people to do that instead of pushing and waiting for it to run everything. Yes. Um, I don't know if I have it set up here to do it, but I can show you the commands for how to do it. 
So basically it's, uh, uh, maybe I even have the commands in smart missions. Well, one thing is actually that you can, uh, this can be pretty convenient. You can actually run exactly the same CI as we're running on the server locally. So basically what it does is it downloads the Docker image and tries to build your package the same way as it would on CI. And you can do this, for example, if you're in the smart missions repo and you want to try the CI of smart, oh, smart missions, you can do it using this command. So this, uh, this kind of assumes that you have sourced the industrial CI package somewhere, but then you can, you know, run this script and it will run the CI as it would on the server. Uh, but if you want to run tests, it's just standard ROS uh, running tests. I don't remember the exact command, but it should be in tools run tests for package. Okay, I mean, you can, I think you can simply run, I think it's just catkin test is to run, uh, it, it, then you run all tests. And I don't remember how you run it for just one package. But uh, yeah, it's Googleable. <laughs> I can send you the command that I'm using if you want to, but it's uh, it's pretty standard practice. Um, it it's a standard feature of Catkin that you you uh, run these ROS test unit tests. Um, right. Any other questions? Okay, let's continue. Um, right, this is a slide detailing basically how you should, if, if you wanna uh, work on a specific package, how you would do that. So first you would install the ROS smart system, uh, smart ROS system as we just did. Uh, then you want to probably fork your uh, fork the smart project repo into your own profile on GitHub, make your own branch. Then you would clone that into your workspace, do the work you want to do, changes, and then commit them, and then push to your fork and open a pull request. Uh, so it's generally how you would you know, contribute to an open source project. Uh, you don't like, some people are maintainers of of uh, repos in the smart project project on GitHub. They are able to push to, to the branches directly, but basically you never want to do that. That kind of defeats the purpose of having CI in the first place because when you open a pull request, it will automatically run continuous integration tests. So I'll show you how that might look. So for example, uh, let's look at uh, Sam Stonefish. Let's look at the pull requests, anything we merged. Uh, na, 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 na. This one, for example, that's actually the one I think that um, added the continuous integration. And here you can see 
if you look at the different commits here, you can see the different uh, passes and if they pass or fail. And you don't want to merge a pull request unless all the tests passed. That makes sure that if anyone else clones the repo later and tries to build it, it will most likely build. Uh, right. And we're testing for noetic and melodic. And then if it looks good and all the all the tests pass, then the maintainer will merge it. Uh, this is uh, then kind of the next consideration is if you want to uh, release your package into the app repository. Uh, what you need to do then is to make sure that your nodes build from a so-called install space. Uh, so it's not uh, like how you would build your nodes uh, generally. I'll show you. So I can show you here if we do. Uh, of workspace. We can actually clone smart missions now and we can see if we can run the tests. So what you want to do is, if you want to test if it will work with uh, an install space, is to do catkin config minus minus install. Uh, and well, that what that will do is it configures your workspace build to do uh, install the packages locally in the install folder. So. If I do catkin build now, it will also install it in the local install folder. Okay, sorry, someone is. Uh, it's the Oculus. All oh, right. You really should do something with the Oculuses for Sam now. Yeah. Now that literally everyone has one. That would be really cool. What do you mean everyone has one? <laughs> I want one. You're not literally. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> okay, Milt got a new toy. <laughs> no, Ivan, we all need one. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's that? Uh, it's. Um, Oculus Quest, it's a VR headset. Ah, you're running the simulator. Yeah, but you need exactly. Facebook for it. That's what we're going to do. It's so, it's so that everyone in our lab can communicate virtually. Nice. Oh, finally. So you have to send yeah. a pull request to me then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so you see now this pass. Uh, we have an install space. That's where it's going to be located now. So what you want to be able to do is if you just source this install space and nothing else, uh, I mean, not source the develop space or uh, any other workspace where you already have it, it should work uh, to, to run all the packages in there. Uh, and if it does, then it's pretty likely that it will work uh, to release the package also. Assuming that you've also specified the dependencies correctly. Um, by the way, now we'll see if, what happens if we do catkin, is it test? Yes. So now it's gonna, now it's running the mission sim test. 
and it's actually you know it's running an actual mission so it's i think it's two or three waypoints that sam is running virtually right now so it actually takes a while uh before it completes the whole mission um or actually i think it's lulu running virtually uh, but yeah, uh, maybe that's the easiest way of running it. Uh, so if you just do uh, Gatkin test, then it will run all tests. And if you have a workspace with just smart missions, then it's just going to run smart missions. Cool. Okay, now uh, something happened. The test succeeded. I wonder if there is any output. Uh, da, 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 probably not. But yeah, it's running the, the test that I showed you earlier, uh, the complete version of that. Cool. So yeah, I think uh, these instructions are here also in the next few slides. Um, yes, but what you want to do is you want to build your nodes from an install workspace. You want to just make sure that all the dependencies are correctly specified. Uh, you want to add, you, if it's a multi-package repository, you need to add your package to these release packages and files, uh, which is uh, what I showed you earlier. Uh, so for example, for smart missions here, you have these release packages, which specifies which packages are to be released. Uh, the reason for not including the other ones here uh, might be that they have not been transitioned to be used from an install space like this. Um, okay. And then you open a pull request and you ping me and I will make sure that we get it onto the release server so that you, everyone can install it with up. And there are some more detailed instructions here in this link. Um, right, so basically the most important thing is to install everything uh, using install targets in your CMake file. Uh, so for example, you need, if you have programs that you wanna be able to use, you need to install them like this. Uh, this is targets, C++ nodes that are built. You do it in a similar way and launch files and other things. Data can also be installed uh, similar to this. Um, this is all specified in the, in the Katkin documentation for ROS. Uh, there's a lot of resources to, to see how this ought to be done, but you can also check out our packages. All right, I need to just go for two minutes. Uh, I'll be back soon. I just need to help carry Knut up the stairs. Hello. Ah, come here. While he's gone, his question. Um, so usually when you have to make these kind of changes, we update the CMake lists.txt, right? The ones who have done this before, like Carl or Rosa. Yeah, as a plus you. <clears throat> Like all of the stuff is in the CMake lists. But it also looks like to make a couple of extra launch files, which adds to the, to do this test case or something, so we can do this CI. Yeah, effectively for individual tests that you want to run, there should be like a launch file that runs the test for you. Mm -hmm. The launch file could be a single Python program or multiple nodes or whatever. Like it's just a launch file. You launch whatever you want, and in the end, it returns success fail. Okay, cool. So just as an example, if we are trying to run the action server and the behavior tree, uh, then in the launch file, we just have that, the usual launch file we use to launch the behavior tree and the action server, we put that in there and put test there and see if it runs. Huh? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I was thinking like, is this just that or do we have to do some create? But for example, in the case of okay. the action server and the behavior tree, the behavior tree won't run your action server unless it receives stuff from Neptus. So you need I, to provide that to the behavior tree in your test. Uh, 
like a kind of input i see yeah or like exactly like nils did uh, in smart missions actually like in smart missions he kind of made a bag of the neptus messages that behavior tree receives and just just publishes those after the behavior tree is running to get the tree to run stuff for it okay i see so you can just copy that or you can just use the smart missions tests actually that will test your action server fine okay nice i'll i'll take a look at that thanks <laughs> sounds good yeah. um right so uh right you want to use catkin tools rather than catkin make um uh, that's the easiest way of testing this um and this is basically what i went through earlier i might have to switch uh <laughs> rooms actually uh, let me uh exit or stop sharing here and I'll switch to my other machine. Uh, so, oh. hmm. I'm unable to stop sharing the screen here for some reason. It's in the Zoom you're sharing, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's because I'm in presentation mode. Oh. The Firefox uses F11 for full screen. Maybe that's what you're in. Well, I can try. Not really. This is full screen. I mean, I see the stop share button and I'm trying to click it, but it doesn't react. Uh, try going to a different workspace, like with no windows in it. Maybe that will help. That's a good idea. Now it works. Excellent group effort. Yay. So, okay, I'm moving to a baby free room. Finally, getting that tour of your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, let's get Papa Stinga Dorren here now. So sorry for the interruption. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's a challenge sometimes. This working from home. Okay, I'll try to share the screen again. Oh. Okay. Okay, so I think we're almost uh, done here. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to touch briefly upon is that we uh, we are currently transitioning from melodic to noetic, uh, and that's gonna entail switching from Python two by default to Python three. 
which is something that I had to uh, deal with now when I released all of the packages and added the CI. So basically you need to think of a few things for the Python nodes. One thing is that you need to add this kind of shebang over here to the top of the files. Mm. So you need to use like user bin and Python rather than uh, bin Python directly. Uh, you need to also use this command, the catkin install Python in your CMake file. Uh, I'll close the door here properly. Uh, and then you also need to uh, sometimes if you have you're depending on different differently named python packages in uh, python 2 and python 3 you might need to add conditional dependencies to your package xml uh, so i think i did that in uh, for example, the smart um, smart uh, in the Ross Wasma suit. Um, so, for example, here I can show you an example of that. So, for Ross Wasm here, you need to. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, it's in this branch over here. Um, so yeah, so for some things, you know, you might need to do something like this, that you have different dependencies depending on the package version. Um, and for example, for the behavior tree, I didn't need to do this. So it's not always uh, that you need to do that. It's just if the packages are named differently. Um, so, and same thing, of course, with the syntax, you need to make sure that it's compatible with both Python 2 and Python 3. Uh, but I think it's, I think both Ursa and Chris, which are the main people who write Python code here, agree that it's, it's a good thing that we transition to Python 3 because it's uh, very few people that use Python 2 nowadays. Uh, and it's actually deprecated since like a year ago. So yes. uh, it's not a good idea to rely on Python 2 since it's, you know, f fixes are not going to be really uh, integrated into Python 2. So it's not a stable long term solution. Uh, but that's it, I think. Um, the, those are the main things that I, I think you guys need to keep in mind when, when developing. Uh, I, I would say the main thing is really that we just keep this workflow going with pull requests and uh, and make sure that the CI uh, builds everything. But uh, we've succeeded well so far, I think, um, in keeping this up. So I think that won't be a problem going forward. Um, and I think with this kind of infrastructure that we have now, it's it's going to be very easy both to use the packages as we saw before, but also to do development, since you can very easily fire up the simulator and try out anything you want to do, and then contribute back, uh, of course. So let's do some cool research. And then we should try to release as many of the packages as possible, make it even easier for everyone to use everything. Uh, and I would encourage everyone to add some tests because I think 
I mean, it's I I kind of realize that it's it's not the most fun thing to do. Maybe to add these kinds of things to your repos and put put extra hours into this now. Uh, I know that I mean it generally like writing tests and documentation is not a thing that most programmers are really keen on doing, especially researchers. Uh, but I think in the longer run, you're going to get that time back uh, by a factor uh, because it's going to catch a lot of bugs that you're all otherwise going to run into when we go out in the field. Um, and I think Ursa can attest to this as well, that we already caught bugs both using the continuous integration test that we're doing online, but also using just running the simulator before going out for the ASCIA tests. Um, and yeah, I think in the kind of, if you look uh, with a kind of the longer, time span perspective, then you're you're going to save time by do actually doing this. Uh, so I think it's for your own good as well. Uh, and I think that's it. So let's take a final round of questions. I mean, one thing I want to note also is that it's, uh, it's hard for someone who's not uh, really has an experience of, you know, working on robotics or in a research group who hasn't really, you know, hasn't had experience from that world. But this kind of infrastructure that we have right here, it's, you know, really state of the art, like the continuous integration and the package releases it's something that you know very few research groups actually have. Uh, so I would say that you, in that sense, you are very well supported. Um, oh, on that note, Nils, uh, does it make sense to maybe add something about this as a news on the website? Just highlight what where we are, or is it even? kind of um, in a state where the whole, we can do a kind of continued uh, conference paper, a joint kind of multi-person conference papers on, on, on how we have set this up. Is, is it on that level or, or where, where are we? I, I, well, no, it, it's not on the, I, I wouldn't really say that it's any novelty research wise. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, it's not unheard of to, to do something like this for a robotics project. Uh, but uh, I think it makes sense probably to at least at some point put out something on the website or something. Yeah. Because I like what it also enables is for us to easily interface with other research groups and Tell them, you know, try out our software, and you know, yeah. maybe we you can try to use your component with our software, and give them some easy instructions on that. And I also think it can drive our or push our agenda in in this uh, driving this uh, common interface. Uh, but but couldn't we then just uh, just set our kind of prepare a small. Uh, news highlight with with some text and something about this that that we can just push out uh, on the website also yeah let's talk about that yeah cool uh, and one more thing regarding this i mean i i fully agree with with what you said uh, i mean we will save time by by uh, catching bugs <laughs> early on in the in the process and also by doing this, we save time for others and others save time for you. So even though you might not save time directly on, on the bugging, debugging that you are creating, you're saving time for, for others. 
and on the other hand you get get back that time by by others doing it for you also um so so i, I fully support that uh, but we, and we have also started to this documentation i mean that's that's also boring stuff but we have this uh, document page uh, documentation page where we kind of collect everything is that uh, something that we should bring up as a separate um, theme or just to push push everyone to remember to to update so that it's at least understandable by by us and yeah. similar researchers what what this is about i i think the the main thing that we've seen is that it's it's the easiest thing for you to do is to make sure the readme is up to date in the github repo and i think think what we will do is to keep on aggregating those readmes into a, a consistent documentation on a website yeah. uh, so you can kind of go in that documentation page to the different packages and see what you need to do to run and install them and so on yeah yeah but then one one should think about that when when writing the readme files that this will then aggregate up to that documentation yeah um, exactly and I, I think one thing that's good to keep in mind is that like if someone comes to you and asks you uh, i was trying to run this code how do i do it uh then your readme was probably not good enough maybe you, then you if you send back some instructions for that person to be able to run it try to add those instructions to the documentation as well in the readme file yeah. So that's, yeah. So the, I mean, that's a rule of thumb. Just by just looking at the documentation there, anyone should be able to run your code. Yeah. Um, I think that that's just uh, yeah. It's a yeah. straightforward way to to just think about it. Yes. Looking at the README file in the repo, you should be able to use the code. Yeah. And and if if someone has has caught an issue, then it's likely that that other people will also catch the same thing. So it, it might as well go up to that readme directly. Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, and uh, I, I, I would also like, I mean, of course, we see that you have put in a tremendous amount of work in this, uh, both presenting and, and running the workshop and also preparing everything. So, I mean, this is super. Um, thanks a lot for, for your efforts here, Nils. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see how, how this will work out and looking forward to everyone using it. Right, anything else or are we uh, satisfied? Definitely, thanks a lot. Good, Bill. This is fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Nils. It was awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right. Uh, but if anyone has any questions or anything, you know, email me uh, and we'll work together. Cool. Nils. Right. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Nils. Yes.